I'm going to minister from the subject, Why Jesus Came. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, 3 through 6, it says, He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, a man of pain, acquainted with grief, literally means sickness. And we know he wasn't sick in his lifetime. That means he took sickness on the cross. So we don't have to be sick anymore. And we hid as it were our faces from him and he was despised and we did not esteem him. And surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrow. For you that are suffering from grief today, Jesus wants to heal you of your grief and your loss. We esteemed him stricken smitten by God and afflicted but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities our sins the chastisement for our peace was upon him if you have no peace today today God wants to give you peace money can't buy peace your spouse can't give you peace children can't give you peace degree can't give you peace drugs can't give you peace peace can only come from God Almighty and today the Prince of Peace Jesus Christ wants to give you the gift of peace the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes or his bleeding wounds we are healed the New Testament says we were healed verse 6 all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned every one to his own way and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity or the sin of us all let us pray father we thank you that you are heaven's sacrifice we thank you that you paid the wages of sin that you died over 2,000 years ago to pay our penalty we love you for that we thank you for that And because of what you've done, we call you Savior, we call you Lord, we call you King of Kings and Lord of all Lords. And today and this weekend, we've come to give you praise, to give you glory, and to give you honor for what you've done and for who you are. In Jesus' name, we ask you to have your way. And all of God's sons and daughters, give them a mighty, mighty shout of praise. The word sozo or save means when he purchased you with his blood, he also purchased your healing. That's why the Bible said he forgives all your sin and heals your disease. It also means to deliver, to keep safe, to keep sound. It means to give people a new life, a fresh start. It means to cause people to have a brand new heart. Powerful statement. How do you have a new heart? Simple. The word heart is actually translated soul or spirit. So right now I'm, I'm looking at you, and you look good, by the way. You look great. Come on, somebody. But the, the truth is, and you're looking at me, but you're not really looking at me, are you? I'm waiting. Let me let me rephrase that. You're not really looking at me, are you? That was a correct phrase, because the real me you can't see with those eyes, and I really can't see you. See, this body, when I die, will go to the ground where it came from. It'll go back to the dirt. But the real me, which is my heart, my spirit, will live forever. One time I saw the real me, my spirit. I saw it one time. And my spirit was big. It was platinum. Like black. So then I'm like, man, Lord, am I really supposed to be black? Come on, somebody. But the real, I was platinum. And I was tall. And I'm like, man. And you know, your spirit, your heart can grow. And that was maybe 25 years ago, 27 years ago. So I'm I'm sure by now, back then, my spirit was like 10 feet tall, 8, 9, 10. I'm I'm at least 15, 20 feet probably by now, you know. So when this body leaves and the real me shows up, I'm going to be like, what's up? And some of your spirit's going to be all cracked out. Come on. I remember one time this pastor was really into bodybuilding. He was really working out, and he had this gym in his garage, and, and, he, and he, he, he is still buff. He's buff, man. This guy is yoked, and he's older, but he's yoked. And he was working out and working out, and the Lord showed him in the mirror like a vision, and he saw himself. 
But the problem was he was all skinny and he looked all cracked out. And the Lord says, that's how your outside looks. But that's how you really look on the inside. How many of some of you have dated somebody and on the outside, you're like, chow. And you got to know them and you're like, man, that spirit is smoking crack. They're crazy. They're evil. Never mind. I'm talking to the wrong crowd. But, but I'm just saying. I'm just saying. How many of you can't judge a book by its cover? Because the real person is the person on the inside. And when you're not a Christian, and you don't have the Holy Spirit because you've been forgiven, your spirit is dark. Your heart is hard like cement. But once you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes inside of you and makes you alive and make, gives you a heart a flesh. Now, I'm not talking about this heart. I'm talking about your spirit. When you get born again, you get saved and God gives you a new heart. And when he gives you a new heart, he gives you a brand new life. How many thank God for a new life? Not only did Jesus come to save us from our sin, but he came to save us from the curse and the bondage of Satan. That's why the Bible says that Christ redeemed us or saved us from the curse by becoming a curse for us. So on the cross, the Bible said that right there he became my curse. He became your curse. Right there on the cross, he became your sickness, my sickness. My failure, your failure. My pain, your pain. My, my sorrow, your sorrow. My shame, your shame. My regret, your regret. That's what it looked like. But we couldn't pay our own price. But thanks be unto God that he was willing and able to pay the price. That's why we celebrate Easter. Because he paid the price. Why did he come? He came. To purchase us from sin and from Satan's bondage. To set us free from the power of the devil. 1 John 3.8 says that's why he came. By his own admission, I came to set you free from the power of the devil in your life. Some of you are suffering from ancestral curses. People in your family, early death failure all these tragedies that were not even that were in your family before you were even born and then you see those same traces in your life and then you see your children struggling with the same traces of curses i'm here to tell you when christ comes into your life he breaks the curse off your life and off your family line you cannot curse what the lord god almighty has blessed shout like you're blessed today he came he came to purchase us from sin and from Satan's bondage. And he modeled for a, on the cross what, if you study every step of the cross and what he went through on that journey to Golgotha and the process of him being crucified, all of that was him letting us know, I'm paying the price not only for your sin, but I'm paying the price to free you from Satan's power and anything he's ever tried to put upon your life. And when you, when you serve me, and you honor me, and you worship me, the power of Satan will never have the power over your life again. That's why he was mocked. He was bullied. For those who have been tormented by it, he came to set you free from that. That's what the young man was talking about. And it's popular in our day and era, bullying people. A lot of people are really messed up today from being bullied. Some people were bullied in, in high school, and junior high. And they told themselves, when, when, when I get older, I'm going to get a degree. I'm going to be successful. And you're all going to work for me. You're all going to be under me. And you realize you, you climb the top of the mountain. But the suffering that you experience as a young person 
is still in your heart today. Because those sufferings don't just leave. They must be yanked out of you by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're going to clap, give God some glory because we're about to move in the Spirit. He was betrayed for those who have felt the sting of disloyalty. And that's happened for many here. That may have happened in high school. That may have happened in junior high. God forbid it may even have, it may even have happened to you in your marriage. Where somebody was disloyal, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, slept with your best friend, broke your heart, and we learn to smile, walk away, play the song, sad girl, just go on and find yourself another guy. And we learn to play the part. We learn to smile, put on Instagram, I got a new man, I got, but it does something to your heart when there's disloyalty. It's a sting, but the Bible said that he was betrayed to heal you of the betrayal of those you trusted in. Come on and clap like he's a loyal God. I love this portion. He was wounded for every sickness and disease in your body. And there's healing at the cross if you would receive it today. I don't know what tradition has told you, but I'm just going to give you Bible facts. The Bible says that by his stripes, we are and we're healed. You say, Pastor, what are those stripes? Well, the first thing you must understand is the weapon that they stripped him with. The weapon that they striped him or whipped him almost to death with. It's called a cat nine tail I actually have one. Somebody gave me one. They ordered it. And they gave it to me and it came. I had to get government like, like a gun, like a permit for it because it's a deadly weapon. Because the cat nine tail was a Roman weapon and it was, it's, it's a pretty heavy weapon and it's got leather thick straps on it. And in those straps is lead, like sharp lead tied to it, sharp bone, like animal bone and glass. And what they would do with the cat nine tail, they would, before they'd whip the individual, they'd rub it in blood. The, the, the leather, and then they would put more glass to even get more glass into the cat nine tail. If you go to family class, we'll actually, let you, we'll actually show it to you. Because when I first got that cat nine tail, and I was just kind of playing with it, I cut myself, just, just moving, and I thought, this thing could rip your eye right out of your socket. This, this thing would shred you. And I even got bold, so I went up to a, a tree, and I hit the tree to see what it would do to a tree, an oak tree. And I pulled and pieces of the tree just ripped out. And I thought, if this can do this to an oak tree, imagine what this could do to a human body. It goes in and it sticks. And then they'd rip. And there'd be a, a soldier on this side and a soldier on this side. And one would hit this way and then one would hit this way and they'd whip and they'd rip and they'd whip and they'd rip and they'd whip and they'd rip and we say that's horrible that's awful yes because the payment for sin is death and he died that death and he was wounded with the cat of nine tail why so you could be healed of every sickness and every disease and you could take authority and tell that devil the curse of sickness and disease is off my body somebody ought to shout like he was wounded then they put a crown of thorns on his head. And they did that so he can deal in our lives with every single mental disorder. We put a crown on Christ here as an example. Obviously it's not Christ, but it's an actor. But we put a crown, but the real crown was three inches long, the thorns. And my theology professor taught us that when you would put that type of crown on, that's why they had to have the stick and they shoved it into his skull, blinding the person that they put the crown on. It was a crown of mockery. It was a crown of mental torment. It was a crown of anguish. Those he was dying for were tormenting his mind. And he did that to deal with mental disorder, psychosomatic syndromes, to deal with to deliver those who are suffering from mental oppression post syndromes from the war he did that to heal you of the trauma you saw in battle he did that to heal you of the trauma you went through as a child he did that to heal you of anxiety 
depression, bipolar disorder. Gee, oh, I'm preaching better than you're clapping. But I'm here to testify that God can heal a tormented mind. Then they spit upon him for those who have been scarred by humiliation. They struck him for those who have been traumatized by physical abuse. They're striking him and striking him. And this particular area that Jesus delivered us from hits home for a lot of us. I don't know how you grew up, but I grew up in a domestic violent home. And I saw it all the time. My stepdad would begin to drink. And as he got drink, he was an angry drunk. And he would break everything and fight and he would abuse my mother. I saw it even in my own sister's life, that curse of spousal abuse. And it is a curse. And it went from my mom and then my sister got a boyfriend and her boyfriend almost killed her. They had eventually called the cops, arrest him and put him in prison. He stabbed her. He almost took her life, but God spared her. And, it, it, and I saw my sister. I saw how it affected her. I saw how her, she wasn't the same. It did something to her. It did something to my mom. They were never the same. My mom would say, I'll never date. I'll never I'll go out with another man because it tormented her. But thank God, when you come to Christ, He was struck for you that have been beaten. So He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you from that abusive relationship. You don't need to stay in that kind of relationship. You need a break free. And when you do, God said, I'll protect you and I'll watch over you. Then they gave Him sour wine with opiates or drugs. And He did that to break this awful temptation that comes on those to deal with life's pain. Self, I call them, I got my degrees in psychology. We call, in psychology, we call it self-medication. In the hood, we would say, I ain't got money for the good stuff. You don't understand me, that's okay. So we would have to go to the cheap stuff. We, we couldn't afford the psychotropics. We couldn't afford the Xanax. We couldn't afford the pills. Now they're more popular back then. They weren't. So we had to go to the weed. We had to go to the meth. We had to go to the cocaine. We had to go to, to the eight ball. We had to go to Hennessy. Come on, somebody talk to me now. Because that knows the pain of our past. And that's why so many become drug addicts because they don't know how to deal with the scars of their childhood. They don't know how to deal with the scars of broken relationship. They don't know how to deal with life disappointments. So they run to the bottle. They run to the joint. They run to the peel. And they shoved the opiate in his mouth. And he took it and he said, I'm doing this for those that are being tempted to get high. That you don't have to be a drug addict for the rest of your life. You don't have to be an alcoholic for the rest of your life. The Son of God can and will set you free. I remember going through this myself. Terrible alcoholic. Terrible drug addict. I, I, I'd smoke methamphetamine every night. And every night I'd quit. I'd say, I'm done. I'm not doing anymore. I'm done with this drug. But you know what happened the next day? That temptation would come. And instead of dealing with my pain and my reality, I would just suppress it with the meth. And I couldn't get free. I never thought I'd get free. I didn't see where I could be free. But once Jesus came into my life, I realized I don't need you anymore. And meth would come knocking, I don't need you no more. Addiction would come knocking, I don't need you no more. Marijuana would come knocking and I don't need you no more. And pills would come knocking and I don't need you no more. I, I, I've divorced you. I've walked away from you. I've been freed from you. I've been delivered from you. And I ain't never going back. I'm talking to somebody today that you're in bondage. Maybe you're online. Maybe you're in overflow. Maybe you're in the living room. I don't know where you are, but I feel God's power to let you know who the Son set free is free indeed. Now, I'll give you 30 seconds. Go on and give him a shout of praise. I said, see the cross. Now listen, then he was crucified. He was pierced. And when they would crucify you, they'd put the nails in your hand and they'd put the nails in your feet. And he did that representing our hands and our feet could receive mercy 
Because I don't know where your hands have been in your past. And I don't know where your feet have been. And it doesn't matter where they've been. God knows where they've been. And on that cross, he says, I know what, they, what they've done. And I know what they've go, they're going to do. And some of you have done gross sins. Some things you've done you've never told anybody about. Some things today you live with aching pain in your heart. Because you've done things. You've done things. And it's, and it's been torment. Some of you have murdered. Innocent. Some of you have done terrible things. You've taken people's lives. Some of you have done awful things. And you live with an aching regret knowing what you've done. And the enemy holds that over you. But I got good news for you today. When Jesus died, he took those, those, those nails in his hand to clean your dirty hand. He took the nails in his feet to clean your dirty feet. That's why the scripture says, the scripture says, do not be afraid. I have bought you and I've made you free and I've called you by my name. The scripture says, I am your God. I bought you and I set you free. I'm the one who takes away your sins because of who I am and I will not remember your sins anymore. The devil would really torment me in this area because when I was not a Christian, I did terrible things in this city and I was really struggling with my walk with God. I really battled because I did so many bad things and I, and I thought, God, how can I just walk away? I've hurt people. I've done terrible things and God taught me. He said, mijo, you have to realize if I haven't forgiven you of all your sin, I haven't forgiven you of none of your sin, then mijo, you got to make a decision. Am I your savior or not? Yes, then right here, right now, your sin is over. What you've done is over. You need to let the dead bury the dead. You need to stop sinning and follow me. And that day I made a choice and the devil would come to me in the middle of the night. Remember you did this and remember you did that. And I said, devil, you're right. I did it. But you need to talk to Jesus because I didn't die on the cross. He died on the cross. They didn't nail my hand. They nailed his hands. They didn't nail my feet. They nailed his feet. I didn't hung high. I wasn't hung high. I wasn't stretched wide. But he did it so I could walk in grace and mercy. Somebody give God praise that he washes us.